Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Cosmic Hour. I am Astro Chris, and I'm joined with my wonderful co-host, Emma. Today, we're going to be talking about the Jupiter ingress Gemini, and yes, we're a little late. However, it's going to be an episode that you can use for the entire year, since Jupiter will be in the sign of Gemini for about a year, so better late than never said the Gemini. <laughs> Let's start with talking about the Gemini energy. We're just going to go straight to it. We have a lot of information to deliver. Um, as soon as uh, Emma starts talking, she can introduce herself. So Gemini, it's represented by this sign that looks like a two, like a Roman numeral two. And the glyph is uh, a representation of twins. Um, even in the mythology, the mythology of Gemini is two twins, the Castor twins. And Gemini is very diverse. It rules the third house. It rules curiosity and speech. And now we're having Jupiter go into his, this sign. So our mental um, factories and old factory also rules that is going to be very stimulated right now with Jupiter transiting that sign. So we're shifting from Taurus and we're going into this energy of Gemini where we're much more curious. We're wanting to learn and expand and, you know, just be more open-minded about things and be more curious about things. And be more hands-on because that's what the Gemini season is all about. Now, we ended up having the ingression of Jupiter align with the ingression of the sun as well. It didn't happen on the same exact day, but we invited the energies at the same time. So currently, as we're recording this, we are having the sun in the sign of Gemini along with other planets. So there's a nice stadium of energy in the sign of Gemini, which is also activating our mind and having us multitask and just expand our curiosity. So I'm so excited about this energy. Emma can talk about this more. Yeah, so I'm Emma. I'm Chris's co-host um, for the Cosmic Hour podcast. Um, and so, yeah, the energy of Gemini, Gemini is the third sign of the Zodiac, like Chris mentioned, and it's ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication and the mind and the intellect. And it's symbolized by the twins, like Chris said, that represents like Gemini's duality, right? The ability that Gemini has to always see both sides of the story or both signs of the, the coins. Um, so Gemini is a very uh, social sign. Um, it is the social butterfly of the Zodiac. So it's very chatty, very curious, witty, intelligent. It's also very quick and fast and always on the go. Um, you know, Geminis cannot stay still too long. Like they always, they get bored easily, easily or they move on to, to things very fast. Um, so they thrive on change and versatility and variety as well. Um, I mean, the ruling planet is Mercury. So Mercury is the fastest planet in our system. So just like Mercury, um, Gemini is very fast and quick. But also um, Gemini is very inquisitive and makes for like natural communicator. Like um, they they're very um, eager and want wanting to learn and eager to share their ideas or their insights. Um, so another thing about Gemini also, it is a very uh, youthful and playful. Uh, Gemini is associated with early education and our, our childhood. So there's a youthful energy to uh, Gemini. Um, anything else you want to add, Chris? Yeah, so check to see if you have any planets in the sign of Gemini. You don't necessarily have to be a sun in the, in the sign of Gemini. Like Emma, she's a Gemini rising. I don't have planets in Gemini, but I have a Gemini north node. And my Gemini energy falls in the 11th house. We will be talking about... Um, 
where the Jupiter energy will be transiting for you later on. So take note of that. But right now is when you want to kind of pull up your chart so you can take your notes later on where the area of life Jupiter will be expanding, transforming, and really impacting all these traits that Emma just discussed. Like it, it can open up new friendships. It can bring in new dating opportunities. It can also bring in a couple, you know, gossip. Maybe you're becoming more gossipy or you hear gossip about you. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes that's not like necessarily bad. It could be that you heard about a good opportunity and you know it was through the grapevine <laughs> um you know we kind of sometimes we label things or they have like a bad name or like a bad intonation to it and it's not necessarily like a bad thing we can always turn it into a positive right hearing information in a certain way might not be bad now if they're like talking bad about you then you know that's different but we also can choose to either accept that information or not, right? Because we have the ultimate power. So yeah, Gemini season, I actually love Gemini season. I attract a lot of Gemini people, um, especially as I got older, I started attracting a lot of Gemini people. And that's because I have a North node in the sign of Gemini. So that's that was a key for me. Whoa, I'm actually living into that North node because I'm attracting these people that are activating my North node energy since I didn't have any planets there. So that's very cool to see. Um, and I like Gemini transits because of that activation to my 11th house. So just kind of pay mind to it. Nothing else to add here. So I'm going to move on. Go ahead. Sorry, really quick. I remember um, maybe two weeks ago, I think when Gemini season started, I texted you and I asked you about a project you're working on. And I was like, hey, how's it going with this? And you were like, it wasn't, but it is now. I think, you know, Taurus season made things slow. And now that it's Gemini, you know, it's picking up again. And it's, I just wanted to mention that because I felt that also in my life, like, um, it's not that I was being lazy, but it's kind of like I wanted to do certain things. But then I was like, ah, I'll do it later. Ah, I'll do it later. And then as soon as Gemini season started, I was like, OK, let's go. Let's do this. Yes, yes, for sure. Especially because we just finished a very like bombarded Taurus season. There's yeah. just so much energy in the sign of Taurus. Right. So think of like a stampede and like these bulls didn't have anywhere to go. So they're like going, going, going. And then the road is narrow and they're kind of stuck. <laughs> and like slowly they were all making their way out like to this, through this like narrow pathway. And then they went into the sign of Gemini. And as soon as the, they went through Gemini, they kind of got free. They all chose their own path. Like there was like multiple things to do there. And that's how I felt. Um, I also have a lot of planets in Scorpio, so it was just like too much for me. And I'm a Leo rising, so it was causing a lot of other tension, like how Emma said, like I was so motivated to do things, and I'm like, you know what, I'll do it later, and then later would be later, later, and later, <laughs> later. <laughs> and, and when she checked on me, I was like, Yeah, it's going, going nowhere. <laughs> like because <laughs> I would start and then I would just be like, you know what? I can't do this right now. My concentration wasn't there. I felt a little bit overwhelmed. And the minute I started seeing some release through the planets going into Gemini, my mind just got like overly stimulated. Like this is what I needed. And especially with the project that I'm working on, I'm actually working on finishing editing my book. <laughs> so book is something that Gemini rules and Gemini rules writing so that's why it just like went with the transit like versus Taurus that's not necessarily an aligned transit for you know writing so it was a little bit harder for me to do um so I I, I felt much like a much easier flow of energy once it went into Gemini but I still love my Taurus season. I worked on a lot of manifesting and doing a lot of other amazing things. But once I was done with that and I wanted to move on to 
editing and, you know, finishing all the little tiny, my new little things that I need to do in regard to my writing, I just couldn't get them done. So the minute we went into Gemini, it was like all gear. So, <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to it because we have a nice little stadium. We have a lot of things going on. On We're going to have the new moon in Gemini that's happening on Thursday. We're, we're I think as we speak, we're having the Venus Kazemi. Um, right. Right? Yeah. So there's just like an over stimulation and just warning, FYI. I already have a very fast Mercury in my chart. My my Mercury is in the sign of Aries. So it's making a sextile to this Gemini energy. So I will kind of jumble my words and talk a little fast and <laughs> not enunciate things correctly because that's what happens. My mind just like speeds up and my speech can't keep up with it. Um, that, but... <sighs> You guys get me. <laughs> I'll explain myself. I'll slow down. I'll I'll try to slow down so like that I explain myself and I don't confuse anyone because I kind I I kind of um tend to kind of go on little tangents sometimes as a Pisces myself. So yeah, but thanks for pointing that out because I really did feel that I was just like oh. I love you, Taurus. I love that <laughs> you were activating my tenth house, but. I need other stimulation now. <laughs> so, yes. So I'm hoping everyone enjoys Gemini season as much as me and Emma will because Emma's having all this activation in her first. And actually just, you know, you mentioned this, but I've had like other gems reach out to me and they have all these like dreams and goals. And I was like, hey, I like this. <laughs> I'm having a lot of the gems reach out to me. The minute that Jupiter went into Gemini, they were just like, and they were, it's so cool because the goals were not like short-term goals. These are like, by the end of this year, this is going to be done. And I was like, I love it. They're like utilizing the entire Jupiter Gemini transit. So, and I'm sure they knew it, but not like, it was more like, I don't know what's getting into me right yeah, now. No, I feel it. I, you know? I get it because I have been feeling this, this push, like this boost of confidence and this um hopeful and optimism energy that I didn't have before that I don't know where it's coming from. And there are so many things that I want to do. And I'm like, oh my God, like, am I just like dreaming too big? Like what's going on right now? So I, yeah, I can see it. Yes, and that's Jupiter, right? Jupiter rules mm -hmm. So it's like having you dream like so big. So I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. Yay. So let's get into Jupiter ingress Gemini. This happened on May 25th of this year, 2024. And it's going to last for approximately one year. So this episode is going to be good for one year. You want to tab it, save it. Um, share it, do whatever you need to do so like that you can reference it back. Um, there's other things we'll point out about this ingression um, because it is also tied into another event that happened with um, an eclipse. But the Jupiter ingression in Gemini was very, very auspicious because we had Venus in the sign of Gemini and the sun already in the sign of Gemini. And then when Jupiter went into that sign, especially from the perspective of Los Angeles, because that's where I'm located, it went into the ninth house and Jupiter rules the ninth house. And it was also with the ruler of the ascendant and Libra is ruled by Venus. So that's the ruler of the ascendant. As you can see here, that's Libra. And Venus is here. So this is a very auspicious alignment. When the ruler of the ascendant is with the ruler. So wherever it, it like the, the house, the ruler of that house. So naturally, even though Gemini is not ruled by Jupiter, Jupiter has an affiliation with this house. So this is like an accidental dignity. Think of it like that. Because Jupiter likes everything that has to do with foreign lands, foreign places. And the ninth house is connected to that. 
So as you can see, this is expanding our mind, but yet it's time trying to hone in on the little things. Libra ascendants tend to have everything flipped, but there is a connection to the other um, house as well because the polar opposite house has a connection to the other house. Um, it's just how it's just how it works in in astrology. There's a similarity, yet a lot of differences between them. Like Gemini rules writing and Sagittarius rules publishing, but they both have a connection, right? Because you pu you publish writings. So they still have a, like a similar connection, yet they're different. So either way, that's the first thing that I noticed. And in the East Coast, it's going to be slightly different. But there's still some good alignments in the East Coast, too. Um, another thing that I noticed is that Mars was in the sign of its rulership. So for the entire ingression, even though Mars keeps moving through other zodiac signs, Jupiter will always have the flavor of Mars in the sign of Aries for the entire ingression this time around. And it's at 19 degrees. So take note of this. 19 degrees, 20. Okay, the North Node at 13 degrees. We also have Neptune that rules Pisces in its rulership. So it's, you know, Neptune's been in Pisces for a while. It's in its last hurrah. It's going to continue there, but starting next year, we're going to see Neptune kind of creep out and go into Aries. But as of now, it's still in Pisces. We have Saturn in the sign of Pisces, and it's halfway through its transit through Pisces so it still needs like another year or so um and Saturn is making an anchoring aspect to the midheaven and then it's the ruler of the moon so even though we have this very optimistic energy um and Jupiter is very high in the chart along with the sun and Venus so you have both of the benefics um the benefics are Venus and Jupiter really high in the ninth house, reaching foreign places. And also the sun, because the sun rules our divinity. It rules everything that is creativity and growth and children and romance and everything that's good. It's, it's a ruler of one of the Dharmic houses, the fifth house. Um, it's in the ninth, that which is another Dharmic house. So you have these planets that rule these houses that let us reach real, real big high places other than venus venus rules our value system and it rules our relationships but it's still considered a benefic planet you have these planets that are trying to reach hard places but then the moon anchoring us down to the home and bringing more seriousness to the conversation because it's in the sign of Capricorn so the moon is the only one that is in debility because it's not in a sign that it prefers the moon rules the sign of cancer so it's actually debilitated by the sign of Capricorn so it needs it goes against its nature it needs to be more cold instead of more nurturing in the sign of Capricorn but it gets some dignity because it's in the fourth house the moon naturally rules the fourth house so it's not completely bad however it does require that maybe there's more work to be done more effort to do things or to materialize things and it's not forming an exact square to the nodes um, or even to Mars, but it's approaching a square. And in mundane astrology, the moon represents the people. And then the nodes represents our destiny. Now, the sun represents the government. Um, and, and Saturn represents the people in the government, like the people in authority currently. And the sun will be like the outlook of the government. And I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't supposed to bring this up, but I am. I mean, we've heard some outrageous outcomes in certain court, in a certain court hearing. Um, and it was during this Gemini season. It just like literally happened when the sun was conjunct Aldebaran at nine degrees. Um, 
Uh, and, and I mean, that's making the headlines, right? So we have some responses from the people. I mean, I'm not taking any sides at all. I really don't care to talk about that now. But um, we are seeing responses from both, um, you know, people supporting and people protesting the decision. So we're seeing that, you know, that come out. And this was a hearing that was, you know, in the works. It was still in the works during this time, but the actual um, the ruling came out after. So you can also see like the moon and Mars, like there, there's something going on. So I'm sure most likely under the scenes, they were working under the scenes in regard to this and it came out. But yeah, it's just interesting to see. Um but there's, I mean, there's some shocking stuff that will still continue to come out because when this moon continues to progress, it would make a um, trying to Mercury and then it ends up making a trying to Uranus. And anytime Uranus is involved, it brings shocking information. And Emma and I are going to coordinate a date so that we can talk a little bit about these certain events that we saw uh, what's going on with Uranus that day and it was just crazy <laughs> but it's interesting to just see that anytime there's like these events that happen like astrology just never fails to like prove it right and we're just like like we can't like we can't say anything but like omg <laughs> like look at this and even us as astrologers we're like just texting we were texting each other back and forth like did you see this did you see that yeah and we're all pointing out like this planet is doing this and this one's doing that it, it's so yeah we were not geeking out it was so exciting to see like who cares about what happened it's just like look the at astrology how yeah. yes like <laughs> look at why and how like it was just amazing so um the reason I'm pointing all this out is because Jupiter <laughs> aggression and Gemini is going to have all this stuff the entire season. And Mars promised it. Mars right here is triggering this Aries point. Remember this. We're going to talk about it in just a minute because this point, this degree is very, very important. And I had talked about this degree in other podcasts that me and Emma have recorded. So whoever noted this degree, I'm going to talk about this soon. Um, lastly, when and an, another important thing, when Jupiter went into the sign of Gemini, the ascendant was at 20 degrees and look at where Mars is at, 19. That means the descendant is at 20. Mars has just like like um set meaning it went right on right under the horizon and mars is a malefic planet so in um in astrology and this is more of an advanced concept we have a day set and we have a nice night set so Mars and Saturn can cause a lot of damage. So, you know, we have one of the malefics causing some damage. There is one that's more dominant at night and one that's more is more dominant during the day, but either one of them cause damage no matter what, whether at night or during the day, but one causes more damage than the other. However, Mars is in a very strong damaging position because it's actually setting in the seventh house the partnering house right and it's in that point that I'm going to talk about so it's in a eclipse point setting so yeah the, this is a astrology nerd alert um something that I noticed <laughs> now we also wanted to talk about what we did in the past Gemini Ingression, because there's other things about this cycle that we wanted to bring up. And I know what I was doing 12 years ago, the last time that Jupiter was in Gemini. And I was a recent new mother. 
my boys were about two and three years old. And literally, my life completely changed during this year. Um, during this year, my boys were both diagnosed with a um, special need disability. And my life just completely was immersed on teaching them skills to learn, to learn language, to learn how to communicate, which was all the energy of Gemini. And during that time, I was also having a nodal opposition because my nodes are in the Gemini Sagittarius axis, but I have my North node in Gemini. So it was a very faded activation where I had to focus on my children. And it's also the axis of children. I had the North node in the fifth house of children. And it had to do with teaching. And I had to make a lot of decisions in regard to how I was going to bring up my children, how I was going to teach my children, how involved I was going to be with my children, how much time I was going to dedicate to my children. And these are things that I never really thought about. I always thought like, okay, I'm going to be a mom. And yes, I'm going to still be, you know, I'm going to work and they're going to go to school and like all kind of normal, but they had me rearrange my entire life. And I had to make major decisions that needed to rebalance my career. And I needed to kind of give up some aspects of my ambitions for career to focus more on my children and home life and teach them really teach them a lot of skills. And I found myself mingling with a lot of professionals like speech pathologists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, behavioral therapists, and learning a lot of the things that they were learning. But I was a parent and I was implementing all these therapeutic practices so I can assist my children. In addition to that, I was also collaborating with them because I was inviting these people to provide you know, services for my children and then, you know, just selecting the people that were appropriate. So it was a very um, interesting time for me because I learned all about a whole new world that I never even thought I would even know or even have to even deal with. And it had to do because of these special needs that my kids ended up having and in um, astrology, the South Node talks about special needs and kids that are spiritual and things like that. Not in general, the kids, but it does talk about spiritual. So you usually see the South Node um, emphasize special needs people, especially if you have the South Node in uh, difficult aspects with certain planets that can affect your you know like develop development and things like that you'll see that you might need a little extra help or you might be a person that struggles with I don't know like an example um like speech and or you have dyslexia or things like that um I actually have my natal south node um conjunct Uranus and it makes a trying to my um my mercury so i i use i used to kind of telepathically communicate and people wouldn't understand that and i was like oh i didn't say that out loud like <laughs> like i need to say it out loud so I, I i thought i had said it and i had to kind of get used to speak like or like speak everything I was thinking because I was communicating a lot without words um uh and, and even now a lot of people that know me when we have like this connection and synchronicity I don't have to say much we f can finish each other's sentences because I have this thing where we can like kind of like pick up on each other's cues and it has to do with that south note it just that it's just the way it works um, but that's more like supportive. It still hinders me because um, there's things that I thought I said and I didn't. <laughs> but it, it's it's more positive. There's some that are hard, right? That you don't even know. You're like, you, 
the person doesn't even know that they haven't said certain words. And they're like, I did say that. And the other one's like, no, you didn't. So um, sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's not. But that's what I was doing. There's a lot of other things that were going on with this chart. Like there's a lot of other points. Um, this is not the exact date that I got the diagnosis, but um, there it was around this time. And I know because of Father's Day, it happens around this time. But it, this day is also very significant no matter what, because there's a lot of activations to my personal planets. I'm a Pisces sun at the same, almost same degree as this moon. I have Jupiter around the same degree as Pluto here. My my moon is actually exactly at 19 degrees of Virgo. I'm a Leo rising. So there's <laughs> all sorts of synchronicities with this chart. I have Venus at two degrees in Pisces. This Venus is at, I mean, Neptune is at two to three degrees of Pisces. And all I remember is I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And this chart just shows Mercury in Cancer, a mom, right, for her children. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> in in the in an aspect to the sixth house where Pluto is sitting and it's an eighth house aspect. I mean, a uh, sixth house aspect, exact. Um and it's like my daily routines, getting to the bottom of it. Like it's it's Pluto energy. And I just remember like, it's okay. Like I kind of like strapped on my bo boots and I'm like, we're going to get to the bottom of this and everything's going to be fine. And I just said, everything's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. And another aspect this is making, it's making a square to Uranus at eight degrees. And I used astrology to heal my children. So astrology didn't necessarily heal my children. I want to correct that. I use their natal chart and based on their natal chart, based on their own personal placements, I saw what their strengths and talents were. And then I went with it. I saw one was more sensory oriented and I saw that one was more um, like the needed desensitization or uh, one was more artistic and one more one was more auditory because one has Mercury in Virgo. The other one has Mercury in Pisces. So I just went with whatever their talents was and then I went with it and I got words out of them. So I used their chart to heal them. And, you know, I lost some friends along the way because they didn't like my methods. But um, I can vouch that my kids you know, they keep every year, they keep on amazing me more and more. So thank you for listening to my story. Um, Emma, you want to share what you did during the last Jupiter ingression? Sure. So my story is not as deep as yours, Chris. But um, 12 years ago, um, I had just moved back home from college and I launched a fashion blog with two of my friends and actually they were my uh, childhood friends. So again, another Gemini theme, you know, doing something with, you know, your friends, your childhood, your early childhood friends. And we launched a fashion blog um, where we had this website where we would write about the current trends in fashion uh, we would write articles about, you know, some tips on how to style your outfits or what's what's what is it currently in season, what to look out for. So, again, blogging, writing, another Gemini theme. Um, what we did also, we our goal was not really to be known internationally. We wanted to, you know, bring awareness to our local community back in Haiti. So we were, first of all, the first fashion, we, we were the first fashion blog in Haiti. And we brought this platform where designers and uh, stores and like clothing stores could basically have a platform to showcase whatever they're selling or they're designing. And again, that's another third house or Gemini theme, which has to do with your, you know, your local environment. Um, so yeah, that was what I was doing. Um, it was called Fashion IT. 
so pretty <laughs> um oh, basically yeah um so yeah that's basically what was what i was doing we launched it on september 11th of 2012 i don't have the exact time i can't remember i was not an astrology girly back then so i didn't mark down the time unfortunately but that was the day and i remember it for sure one um, thing that i can see about this chart is that there is a mercury Cassini around that time yeah do you see that yeah I see, yeah and then Jupiter was in your first house, but Venus was transiting your third house. Yep. And then yeah, was, and uh, Venus is making an aspect to Uranus, it's like a trine. But yeah. re remember what I said, like we were the first uh, blogger, you know, to initiate this platform for, um, you know, designers and everything to kind of like, for others really to really know what Haitian designers and Haitian artists had to offer. So we kind of brought this platform, this online platform Uranus for, for you know, Venus stuff. Yeah. So it's like an, an unusual thing. Like you guys mm -hmm. kind of hear something unusual. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Well, I wish I, I wish you had the time so we could like really look at the time. You already know I would have geeked out on that. <laughs> I know. I, I would want to know. I mean, you had there was a real good dignity Saturn, um, Saturn in this chart. So I mean, it might have had a good potential to like last, you know, last a while. I, I, I know you said you had it for a while. Yeah, I had it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't years. square to the moon. So maybe that's what ended up happening. That square to the moon didn't allow it to continue because Saturn does make that strong square to the moon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's and look at Neptune was transiting, had just moved into Pisces, well, a couple of years, but it was getting closer to my uh, MC. And I was known for that for actually for almost 10 years I was known in Haiti for being fashion IT like people when they would see me in the street they would say oh fashion IT up to this day actually oh that's so cute I love it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's cool I yeah. like that and Neptune is the higher octave of Venus yeah oh wow that is so cool that's oh yeah. wow so it was conjunct your MC like right on mm -hmm. your MC yeah okay and then you did this from home. So the sun and Mercury were on your, it was in your fourth house. From fourth home. house, yeah. 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 Wow. That's cool. cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, even though you're, you know, you had a whole different, like, as you can see, like, your experience was whole, like, very, very different than mine. It was still very meaningful. Like, no matter what, like, what you did, it was, like, nice, you know, that you did something. Yeah. So whatever you guys do, just take notes. You'll see we only have so many Jupiter ingressions in certain signs because Jupiter takes such a long time in a sign. We don't get too many opportunities to have Jupiter activating a sign. So just kind of, you know, take note of what happens because in another 12 years, we'll have Jupiter in that same sign again. Yeah, and if you can, try to remember what you were doing 12 years ago um to see if you know maybe something similar or with the same theme might show up again this time around exactly because now even though for me it's not necessarily the exact theme but similar things are happening for me and it's even even though I'm an astrologer and I can plan things more around astrology there's also a lot of synchrony synchronicities that happen that you just kind of go with the flow and things, the universe just ends up happening and making th things happen. And one is my book. I had finished my book a while back and something kept on like pushing it back where I was like, I'll do that later. I had to edit it, but I just was burnt out from writing it. My book is pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> It's very comprehensive. Um, and then even in the editing process, I had to cut down on certain things so I can make it a little bit more condensed. So that's where like 
and I have, and you know, to share a little more, I have Mercury and Aries, and it's in the ninth house. It doesn't like editing. I don't <laughs> like to edit my shit. I don't like to even look. I don't. I and all my, all my people know already. I hate using like spell correct and all that stuff. I just don't do it. I don't care for it. I know how to spell. Sometimes I transpose shit. I just do it and I don't care. <laughs> like I don't care if people think I don't know how to spell. I already know I do. It's just that my mind thinks so fast. It feels like it's a waste of time. But I know I have to do it because obviously it's not going to be professional if I don't. And then there's times that maybe I, you know, like the book might not be clear if I don't do that. Like I need to make sure everything I wrote is clear. So I just kept on pushing it back and pushing it back. And all of a sudden, I just get this urge like, this is it. I have to do it. I have to do it now. And I just couldn't. I was getting like nightmares. Like, I need it. I need to finish the book. Like, I'm waking up. I can't sleep. And I'm like, okay, Crystal, this is enough. Like, you need to grab it. You need to do it. You need to start doing it. So I had to set up my plan and everything just is aligning during this time. And what is Jupiter is the publisher. Gemini is books. So like I'm doing it there. Like I'm there already. It's going to happen. I already have a date. It's happening. So it's not the same, but now I'm teaching, but I'm teaching astrology through a book. So it's still like a repeated pattern, but it's a different theme. Back then I was teaching my children, which is still a Gemini theme. Gemini rules children, Gemini rules teaching. And I used astrology to teach them as well. Because instead of using uh, doing consultations back then, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to use their chart and I'm going to help them through their chart. I was just using my intuition and I went with it. And I don't regret it. I know I was weird. I didn't care. Like my intuition told me, just go for it. Like it's going to work. And it did. And I don't regret one bit of it. Um, and I, I suggested it to other friends and they did the stuff and it worked on their kids and they were like, what? And it's because I learned how to read a chart based on their vibration, the energy of that planet, how it communicates. So then it shows up as a personality trait in you. And that's how I was utilizing it especially for the kids, you know, and it's so much simpler for kids versus adults, you know, because we're set in our ways. But as children, they're much more simpler. They haven't developed yet. <laughs> we're kind of teaching them to develop. So it's a, it's a easier reading than with an adult, right? Adults want to know, when am I going to get married? When am I going to have <laughs> oh, a good career? Like It's always you know, the same. <laughs> yeah, it's always the same thing. Children don't even care about that. Like they don't, mm. you know, they, they don't even seek readings. This is the parents that seek reading for children. So, it, and and the parents want to know this stuff about their children versus like the readings that I do whenever I do offer, because I do offer mommy and me readings. I never offer child readings. I offer mommy and me because my readings are tailored on how as a parent can you support your child? Um. And that's how I offer it because I'm going to give you insight on, you know, your child's strengths, maybe their weaknesses and how your strengths and your weaknesses can play onto that. And then how you can help each other because, you know, my kids also help me a lot. Like I had to be patient, you know, my, I'm, I have a Mercury in Aries. They have Mercury and Pisces and Virgo, totally different mode element and even house. I had to be patient and I don't have patience my mercury in Aries has no patience it doesn't even like to spell check so <laughs> I had to learn to spell check I mean luckily I have a son in Pisces so I there's placements in my chart that allow that patience but if we're talking from mercury to mercury my nature is not like that so they taught me a lot too you know so yeah just look at your patterns and you'll see repetition. You'll see some slight repetitions with Jupiter. It's every 12 years, but with other planets, it could be more consistent. Like if you use a personal planets because their cycles are shorter, maybe you see like 
like a more dominant pattern. Um, but the fun ones I think are the ones like Jupiter, because it's like every like every year they go into a different sign. Um, like Mercury is like switching so fast, and so is the moon. So those are very quick. And I mean, I, I already noticed like there's certain moon signs that I just don't feel the greatest around <laughs> or on. <laughs> so I just try not to like get upset during those those moon signs <laughs> but you know um I think bigger themes Jupiter is great Saturn's a little harder because it <laughs> takes longer um Saturn is Emma's best friend <laughs> yeah he's my daddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then the outer planets are even harder because they take longer yeah. so yeah Okay, so let's jump on to the significant date that I was going to mention, which was Mars at 19 degrees at that eclipse point. So Mars triggered that eclipse eclipse point at 19 degrees 23. So when Mars when Jupiter ingressed Gemini, Mars was at 1920. So it was only about mm, I want to say like an hour difference. Um Let's go back. So it was 4.15 when it ingressed and then at 5.41. So about an hour and a half difference that Mars went into that eclipse, that exact. So it's only three minutes, that exact point. So what ended up changing was the ascendant. But and, and then the house has shifted, but mainly all the planets are still in the same place like the, the moon shifted from four degrees to five degrees but saturn neptune everything else is pretty much in the same place so as you can see mars brought in the eclipse energy that happened that 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 uh solar eclipse in aries that was also very very crazy so you guys can listen to that solar eclipse too because it's gonna be a theme for the jupiter um Gemini ingression it's not going to be as strong because it is Jupiter and Gemini that we're talking about but those whatever happened during that time you can have some residue come back in because Mars is saying hey we're not done with that like remember what happened during this time like I still want to talk about it it's like you thought the argument was over and Mars is like uh uh no 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 like do you remember that like the moon and the sun met right here and like that happened like, hello, right? And Mars is bringing it back in. So this happened exactly on May 25th, the same day. But, you know, keep note, take note. Maybe something happened to you that exact day. And you're like, oh, maybe that day, that's why I was not feeling the greatest. But Mars was pretty strong um, during that activation because it end ended up ruling the Ascendant. It ruled Scorpio Ascendant at that time. So... And it's really strong in the sixth. Mars' favorite house is the sixth house. So uh, our daily routines, our health, things like that. It's an, impacting our um, ability to execute on, on a daily basis. So something's going on during that during this season that is going to impact how we take action, how, how we are deliberate in our actions, like how we're executing them in a way that is deliberate. Okay, and lastly, every Jupiter cycle, pretty much every Jupiter cycle, we have the sun that makes a conjunction with Jupiter. So we have the transiting sun that makes a conjunction with a transiting Jupiter. And this is happening like almost, this is like guaranteed to happen. Almost every Jupiter transit. We just, right before the sun went into Gemini, we had the Jupiter sun conjunction in Taurus. Well, guess what? We're not going to have a Jupiter sun conjunction in Gemini. And this is what the Jupiter sun conjunction represents. So the Jupiter, when Jupiter conjuncts the sun, it basically brings 
an overload of confidence, positivity, abundance, luck. Jupiter is known to be like the, let's call it the good luck charm of the Zodiac, if you want. So it brings all that good luck, that positivity, that um, good fortune and exp expansion and enthusiasm. So really when the sun and Jupiter conjunct, it's a really auspicious day. So I usually, I know Chris also likes to do that, but that's a really good day, you know, to, you know, do like a ritual or, you know, do something nice or big that you want to either manifest or accomplish because Jupiter brings that good luck energy and you know the sun is like vi vitality you know it's 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 our life purpose it's our, our life force yes it does it brings this like growth and expansion to our life it's very benefic it's actually an aspect that we really look forward to do on a transit basis like every time jupiter goes into a new sign we're always looking for as an astrologer we're always looking for that pot of gold aspect and this time around, we're not going to have one when Jupiter transits the sign of Gemini. Because before Jupiter exits the sign of Gemini, the sun never catches up. So Gem Jupiter goes into Cancer. Then the sun goes into Cancer. And then they conjunct at early degrees in Cancer. So for the entire Jupiter in Gemini transit, there is no jupiter sun conjunction so all these themes that we're talking about here fortune prosperity growth because that's what the jupiter sun conjunction means we're not going to get it as a transit however jupiter will make a trine so you'll get jupiter trying the sun you get jupiter sex your sun um and trine will be to the other air signs so aquarius and um Libra, the sextile will be to Aries and to um Leo, but we're not gonna get a Jupiter Sun conjunction, but we will have it through a natal sun conjunction. So if you happen to be a, a um native with your son in Gemini. And I think Emma should talk about this because Emma is a Gemini rising. Yeah, so you want to pay attention when Jupiter is going to make a conjunction to your natal sun. So if you don't know when that is, um, look up your chart and see what degree you have your sun in Gemini. Or if you're like me, you have your uh, Gemini rising. You want to look at the degree of your rising. And that will be... Um, the degree when Jupiter reaches that degree, it's going to make a conjunction to your natal sun. Um, so it, the collective won't have the sun Jupiter conjunction, but you in your chart, you'll have your own personal um Jupiter sun conjunction. And like we mentioned, like this is an auspicious day, so you will be you you will want to take advantage of that day. Um. Because you will be able to have all these um, benefits that the Jupiter Sun conjunction brings, which are like that extreme confidence, abundance, that pot of luck, and that optimism. Uh, I remember at the beginning of the podcast, Chris talked about how some Geminis were writing to her and saying that they want to do this and they want to dream big and have all of that. Like all of that are Jupiter themes that might come up for you if you have a uh, Gemini sun or or even rising. Yeah, and it, they're super auspicious to launch or do around that conjunction. And even before um, we we recorded this or we, we set to record, we were researching and it happened to be around the Jupiter sun conjunction in Taurus. And... I mean, I wasn't even planning to do anything because I've been working on, like like I mentioned, editing my stuff and doing that. Actually, that was a day we had that conversation. Like, how's the book going? I was like, it's going. And we just like tangent on other things and started talking about other stuff. And then eventually I was like, Emma, the Jupiter sun conjunction is happening. We need to do something. 
This is the last Jupiter Sun conjunction until it has another conjunction in, in Cancer. So um I don't know what we did. And and I know we were both like, oh, we need to do this and that and this. And then we kind of like set some dates and um we kind of set it in stone, but we tried to do some auspicious things during that time because that's what you do when there's a Jupiter Sun conjunction. So it's really good for setting intentions or even setting things in motion that are going to bring you abundance or you want a positive outcome. So let me give you an example. Just say you're house hunting and you're like, you know what? I'm no, I know I'm not going to buy a house this year, but this is, this is it. Like I'm done being a renter in two years. I see myself buying a house, but what I need to do is I need to pay down my credit cards. Like I am done with this. So if you see an alignment such as this, a Jupiter sun conjunction, you can do something as simple as you send your payment, like a bigger payment during that time, or you do a meditation where you're like, I love paying my bills. Yeah. It might, it might sound like dumb or stupid or something very simple or like what, but if you change your mindset, cause that's what you're doing, especially with Gemini energy, Gemini is all about changing your mindset. Jupiter is being optimistic about it you're really embodying the energy and then you're doing something that's going to give you like a long-term gain right so then you now set like in motion something that's going to give you fortune later right something that's going to pay off later but you did it in a way that yes, it's not all going to happen that same day, but it's that moment, that moment you took accountability, that moment you took power, like it's in your control. And you said, that's enough. I'm no longer going to be an automatic shopper. I'm taking control. And that doesn't mean you're never going to buy anything ever. You're never going to like, you're going to stop like shopping and taking like, I don't know, like pl life's pleasures. You're not going to have fun. No, you can still have fun. And yes, you can treat yourself, but you're just going to do it in a way that at the end of the day, you're also going to treat yourself bigger because you have a goal. So in order for you to treat yourself bigger, unless you're making way more money, you need to know how to resource out and budget yourself right? So you're taking that initiative. So you sit that day and you budget and you're like, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to spend here, not spend there. And I'm going to pay more of this and I'm going to get rid of that. And yeah, it doesn't sound like fun now, but then in a year from now you're empowered and you're like, yes, I did it. And you listen to that meditation where you love paying your bills and money flows <laughs> in and out easily, <laughs> right? And you're just like, yeah, so it could be something as simple as that. It could be also something like just say you have a crush on someone and, you know, you know, that person has a crush on you too. And this is the day you let that person know, like it could, it could turn out to be a very positive response. Like you like, let them know, like, Hey, I want to get to know you more than friends. It's the Gemini energy. Like, is, do you want to go out on a date? doesn't mean you guys are going to like sleep the same, you know, sleep with each other the same day. It could just be that you're getting to know each other. And maybe like later on, you're like, you know what? I'm not really attracted to that person. Maybe you are, but it can turn out to be a very auspicious thing because you're doing it on an auspicious day. So, so I remember what I did for the sun Jupiter conjunction in Taurus, because we were talking about it. And I just remember when you mentioned it, it was to create my YouTube channel. So I created yes. the, even though I haven't posted yet, but I created the channel. <laughs> so maybe that's something I do this Gemini. I don't know. We'll see. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, remember I told you, you need yeah. to create a channel because you're the one that keeps on time, time stamping our stuff. I was like, it has to have your stuff too, Emma. And I was like, you need yeah. to do it now. And then we went in. I'm like, let's set the date. You're going to launch it at this time. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah, and it was late at night. So I had to put an alarm on my phone to wake up to actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's how we do. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, yeah. 
we're not we're not gonna have this Jupiter conjunction as a collective. We usually do so. Typically, we have two. An example: I'm a I'm a native with Sun in in Pisces. When there was a Jupiter Pisces conjunct conjunction, we had one as a collective. Like everyone experienced it because the Sun and Jupiter conjunct, and everyone's like, "Oh, the Sun Jupiter conjunction." Right. But I also had when the transiting Jupiter hit my natal sun. So I had two of them and they mean the same thing. So transiting Jupiter conjunct your sun means this, all this right here. So does transiting sun with transiting Jupiter. It's the same meaning, but it's more individualized for you when it's transiting Jupiter hitting your sun because that's your sun. Not everyone has the same degree sun. So it's more individualized to you. That's a more impactful one. It's a double whammy. Just say like the Jupiter conjunction happens right on your sun. You're, so you're getting like a double Jupiter conjunction with a sun. You're like, oh, yeah. I mean, things like that can happen too. So that's even more auspicious, right? So that's how you start kind of like gauging how like auspicious this is. But we're not going to have that, this Jupiter conjunction. And when I saw that, because I like research, I have a lot of planets in Scorpio and the fourth. So I like doing my research. I went into Astral Seek and I was like, let me look up all the Jupiter, <laughs> Jupiter transits in Gemini and see why this is happening. So I thought I discovered a pattern. And um, I noticed that it had skipped. And then I also noticed that during the years that we have Jupiter transiting Gemini, the stock market acts a certain way. We're not going to talk about this now, but it does act a certain way. And, um, you know, it has certain behavior that sometimes is not the greatest. <laughs> but either way, the last time that Jupiter transited Gemini and made a conjunction was in 2013. And we just showed you that in 2012, Jupiter went into Gemini. So June 20th of 2013, the sun and Jupiter made a conjunction. So that means right before um, Jupiter exit the sign of Gemini and made a conjunction. And then we're expecting one in 2024. But wait a minute, where is it? It jumps from 2013 to 2036. And then 2036 to 2048, that's 12 years later. Another 12 year, years later is 20, 2060. Another 12 years later, 2072. Another 12 years, 2084. Another 12 years, 2096. And by then, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> um, so I'm like, okay, what is happening here? I went back and I'm like, okay, 1906, 12 years later, 1918, okay, 12 years later, I'm like, wait a minute, right? There's a gap right here, right? No, wait. Mm, no. No, that's correct. Correct. The gap is here. Yeah. There you go. 1930. Yeah. To 1953 and this is where we had the ww2 yeah 1942 yeah so yeah and then from there every 12 years so i was just like yeah what is going on here so we skipped it of you know that time we're skipping it this time we're not having this conjunction um, we're not going to end up skipping it again for a couple years. I didn't. I did more research, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not living me myself. Not living after 2096 for sure. I'll be like over 100. So <laughs> I was just like, this is enough info to post. Oh um, wow! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I was born in 84, so 2084, I'll be 100. By 2096, <laughs> I'll be 112. So, <laughs> so I don't think I'll live past that i mean i'll be lucky if i make it to 2072 <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah um but this is it we're not gonna skip another jupiter and gemini um yeah i didn't do research if we're skipping if we skipped other signs 
Um, I quickly looked and I didn't see anything. It was just a quick scan that my Mars in, I'm sorry, my Mercury in Aries did. But again, it doesn't like to do a lot of attention to detail. So I have to go look back and see. But the only one I identified was Gemini for now. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. If you guys identify other ones, I like it. You guys let me know. Um, But now we could go into the zodiac signs. So we can let you know how this Jupiter transit is going to act. You're going to have your own personal Jupiter sun conjunction wherever you have the Gemini energy. So this is going to be applicable to you. And um, we're going to also give you some affirmations that you can recite during this tran transit that's going to last for a year. And Emma's going to start because she first is a Gemini rising. So why not have the Gemini start? Yay. Yay. So Gemini's. Um, so Jupiter in your sign, well, in our sign, is here to bring us all the blessing so when jupiter is in your sign basically you feel like a boost of confidence and enthusiasm and just a desire to express yourself more fully making this like a time to a time for personal growth but also like reinvention so new doors will be opening new opportunities for growth for success meeting new people but also learning new things so overall, this is a period where um, there's a lot of personal growth and increased self-expression. Um, so Jupiter is basically giving you the green light in all aspects. So go make yourself be seen, go shine, or like even go make yourself be heard because, you know, Gemini, you want to talk. So the affirmation for you, Gemini, is I embrace growth and new opportunities, confidently expressing my true self and attracting positive energy into my life. Woo, I love it. Now for Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising, Jupiter is transiting your 12th house. Now, this is all about spiritual growth and introspection. Typically, a transit through the 12th house is not necessarily a very strong transit. However, Jupiter is the traditional ruler of the 12th house. So this is going to be a very deep spiritual journey for you. You're going to be more curious about learning in regard to meditation, dream work, connecting to your inner self. This is going to be a healing journey for you. So you're also going to be able to get more closure about maybe like the past or trying to heal the past. Or if you've never gotten like a past life regression, you might be open to this now. You might be uh, open to working with your ancestors or okay, open to work with angelic realms or even learn to do this stuff because this sector, this area of life, it's all about opening and working with the spiritual realm. So Jupiter is going to be working in this area to expand your mind in a very different way, in an untangible way. It's also a house that's connected to faraway places like retreats or um, places that you go to get like spiritual awakenings, like, you know, like Bali or a yoga retreat or things like that. So it's also a great time to plan something like that. And your affirmation for this transit would be, I trust the process of spiritual growth and embrace the wisdom within. Now for Leos, so for Leos, you can expect a social boost with Jupiter going through your 11th house of friends and networks. So Jupiter is going to basically encourage you to expand your social circle, meet new people, jo join new groups, um, just basically expand your networks. It's um a really good time to mingle more, maybe like joining new clubs or online community, um, or just any anywhere where you can really share your ideas and learn from from your peers or from other people, um, and really 
with people who can help you achieve uh, your goals, basically. Embrace this period of social growth as it can lead to exciting new opportunities and connection. Your affirmation is, I embrace new friendships and connections that support my dreams and aspirations. Now for Virgo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is very auspicious for you, Virgos, because now you're the one with Jupiter shining in your 10th house of achievements, legacy, career. So this house is all about what is your life purpose. And Jupiter brings that. What is my purpose? You're going to be questioning your purpose. You're going to want to know more about like the meaning of the meaningful work that you do during this time. So you want more recognition. If you are currently in a position that you find no meaning, like a dead end job or a position that you feel like you've been wanting to leave for a while, typically during this time, we leave those positions. Jupiter opens up new horizons for you so you can actually do work that is more meaningful meaningful for you it's not about the money it's more about the meaning of this work and the money will come and follow so it's all about being recognized for the work that you do and jupiter can bring these opportunities advancements through promotion promotions or maybe even opening up doors for advancements, like you getting promoted as a manager or um, even opening a company, things like that. You can even have multiple jobs. Actually, a lot of the mutable energies, when they're on the angles, they actually hold multiple jobs because they're the master multitaskers. And Virgo Risings with the MC in Gemini, they tend to have mul mul multiple jobs because Gemini rules that. So it might be a time where you still keep your full-time job, but then you decide, let me start a side hustle, something that you love to do, something that really comes from passion. So embrace your leadership and take on those roles that are going to share all that, this passionate work and, you know, dedication that you have to share like the ideals and your vision and everything to the world because the 10th house is your stage and you're here to show everyone what you've got. So do it. Now your affirmation is I pursue my career and goals with confidence and attract opportunities for success. Ooh, that's a nice one. Love it. I know I'm <laughs> jelly. <laughs> All right, Libras. This is also a really nice transit for Libras with Jupiter going through your ninth house of foreign travels, exploration, adventure, higher learning. So Jupiter in Gemini is basically encouraging you to open up your mind to new perspective and broaden your horizon. Now, whether that means through traveling or to learning a new skill, going back to school, or just like engaging in, in deep philosophical discussions, because that's what the ninth house represents as well, like um, philosophy, um, different belief systems, um, or also finding a new mentor could be really good for you during that time. I know, side note, I met Chris, my mentor, during uh, Jupiter going through my ninth house. So that's a really nice if you're looking for a mentor that would be a really nice time to to find one um but yeah just opening up your mind and experiencing new cultures and new experiences just bringing on that sense of adventure your affirmation is i embrace new knowledge cultures and experiences expanding my mind and spirit with each adventure Yes, I love that. And this is a nice transit because Jupiter loves the ninth house. Yeah. Love it. Okay, moving on to Jupiter in the eighth house for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Now, Jupiter doesn't necessarily have a connection to the eighth house, but I find that Jupiter does well in the eighth house. Jupiter likes teaching 
And the eighth house is all about the esoteric knowledge. So I usually see a lot of curiosity, a lot of expansion and diving deep into topics of like esoteric, sexuality, other people's money, finances, deep relationship issues. Um, it can also bring a lot of gains and opportunities for the partner. So if you have a partner, a husband or live with someone, um, this can expand the partner's money. So it benefits them as well. So there's a lot of opportunity through growth and transformation. It deepens relationships. There's financial gains through shared resources. Great for investment. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, it's also good for embracing emotional and spiritual healing. So I actually like the transit of Jupiter in the eighth house. It's actually one of the planets that does really well in the eighth. There's some that do not do as well transiting the eighth and Jupiter is one that does. So embrace this energy and really dive deep to all the occult, esoteric, astrology, <laughs> all the, you know, uh, secret knowledge, the, the hidden knowledge that just like dive deep into that. And if you don't really want to do that because you just don't, um, it's great for budgeting. It's really great for budgeting. It's also great for loans, um, attracting more debt. Sometimes more debt is healthy. Like if you want a mortgage, things like that. Um, really, really nice with that Jupiter transiting the eighth. So your affirmation for this season would be, I embrace transformation and trust in the power of deep connections. Now for Sagittarius, Jupiter is blessing your relationships as it's going through your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Basically bring opportunities for growth and expansion and whether it's a romantic partnership, a business partnership, or even your friendships. So you'll find that communicating becomes easier and you're more able to understand each other. Um, so this makes a great time for maybe forming a new relationship or deepening the, the bonds with the ones that you already have. Um, if you're single, maybe it's a really nice time for you, you know, to meet that special someone or basically attract people who kind of inspire you and support you. It's also really good to collaborate with others. Um, maybe partnering up on a new business venture or negotiate. The seventh house has to do a lot with negotiating contracts. So it could be maybe you have a project that you want to launch also, and maybe you're um, really focusing on the negotiating aspect of it and uh, uh, writing up the contract. So anything that has to do with partnering and relating to other people, your affirmation is, I attract positive and supportive relationships, fostering growth and understanding in all my partnerships. I love it. Okay, so for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising, Jupiter is transiting your sixth house. Now, this transit is enhancing your work and health routines so this is great for work opportunities it's very similar to career but this is more like day-to-day -day work so just say you are in your ideal career it's also going to impact that but it's going to more impacted on like the day-to-day -day, uh, routine of the career maybe it brings in more tasks more things that you have to do or more responsibilities. Um, also, um, things, themes or things around coworkers, um, your daily schedules, your calendar. Um, and th there's also an emphasis on your health. So it's balancing work and health. And um, this is also a meal prep house. How you go about taking care of yourself, not just like exercise, but your diet, like the way that you take care of your body, the way that you honor your body, um, the way that you 
look out for it? Like, do you, are you dedicating time to, you know, exercise or to meditate, things like that? So it's all about enhancing all these areas, all the day-to-day and balancing it out. Like I work X amount of hours and then after work, I do this. And then after I do that, I go to the market or every Friday I meal prep, like things, I mean, I'm just making things up, but you have to look at your schedule to see how it works. And it's not going to be like the funnest, funnest transit. There's other transits. You just came off a fun one, Jupiter transiting your fifth because it was in Taurus. Now it's all about like kind of honing in on the routine. And it's really funny how this works because when Jupiter was in your fifth house, you were focusing more on romance and leisure and having fun. And maybe you had too much fun. You put extra pounds from all the dates that you went on to all the nice fancy restaurants that you went to. And now Jupiter is going into Gemini and it's like, oh no, we need to kind of not do that no more. (laughs) We need to fit into this stress or we need to like take care of ourselves. It's not about like, like ha- being a certain way is about feeling a certain way, right? Like as we get older, we're not feeling the same anymore. So health takes a different meaning. So this is what this health house is talking about. And this is the health house. So enhance your work routine. There can be possibilities of new job opportunities or improvements in your daily habits. Focus on wellness and how efficient you can make all these work together. And your affirmation is I cultivate healthy habits and embrace opportunities for professional growth. So for Aquarius, um, you're having the transit that Chris was talking about. (laughs) Um, you having Jupiter transit your fifth house of creativity, romance, and fun. So Jupiter in Gemini will ignite your creative passion. It's um, a good time to dive into any artistic projects or any creative endeavor that you have, whether it's painting, writing, um, dancing, music. Any activity that brings you you joy, like now is the time to just launch yourself at it and just have fun. Um, Your uh, romance and social life is also getting a significant boost during this transit. So maybe you feel like going out a little bit more or maybe you even feel a little bit more flirtatious and you go out on more dates um, or just basically enjoying life's pleasure because this is the house of leisure and and pleasure so this could bring new potential romantic opportunities for you if you're single or if you have if you're currently in a relationship maybe you add more fun or more playtime into your, your your relationship like more dates movie nights um so this is actually a really nice fun one and Actually, I just noticed something. I'm an Aquarius sun. And Chris, you're going to be proud of me, but I am putting myself out there a little bit more. (laughs) Um, I know we had that talk a while back, but yeah, and I just noticed that. So (laughs) your affirmation, Aquarius, is I embrace joy, creativity, and romance, allowing my playful spirit to shine and my passions to flourish you're having the sun trying jupiter aspect the entire time yep omg omg revelation (laughs) love it love it okay pisces where are all my pisces at pisces sun in the house um (laughs) pisces sun moon are rising so pisces transiting the fourth house Now, the fourth house, I actually love the fourth house, but it's one that requires rest and really working on your sacred space and your ancestry and your home, you know, even your family. This is a house that is connected with one of the parents. It could either be the mother or the father, but it is generally ruled by the energy of cancer. Um... So it's all about either growing the home and the fifth activation and the fourth activation can be good for expanding family. 
If you are seeking to have children, you can either look into a fifth house activation or a fourth house activation. They can be really well, like really good for you having another baby if that's what you're looking for or like um, getting a new home for the fourth house, like finding a new place to live, buying, a, you know, your first house. And these are all the things that I'm actually going to be looking at this year. I've been actually working on this for a while, um, but I've been looking for the perfect place. So I found houses that I'm like, nope, I'm not doing it. I don't like it. So I know it's coming. The house is coming soon. And <clears throat> this transit is going to bring it. So it's all about growing your home or getting a new one, remodeling your home, changing the atmosphere around your home, or even working on your sacred space. Great for creating an altar, great for renovating, great for um, working with your ancestors, great for revisiting your um, family recipes or creating an album with your family recipes or with pictures or retelling stories or throwing more parties where you invite the family over. Jupiter loves big families. I see a lot of people with Jupiter in the fourth and then and like natally that have huge families and they always have huge family parties. So all this year, if you want to invite people over, have family parties or go to a lot of your family parties, this is a year to socialize that way. You might network, meet more people, things, things like that. So focus on creating a more loving and supportive home environment. You're just going to love it. It's just going to be bigger and better and nicer. So your affirmation for this season is, I create a nurturing and expansive home environment filled with love. All right. Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Um, so Jupiter is transiting your third house. And for you, it's all about boosting your communication, learning, and your daily interactions. So you'll find yourself being a little bit more curious and eager to learn and ready to engage in stimulating conversations with other people. So you'll most likely feel more sociable and wanting to share your ideas with others. Now, whether it is through writing or talking or just sharing your your ideas via social media or through any form of communication online, um, but your mental stimulation is going to be at it. Um, you can expect also meaningful daily interactions, maybe by taking short trips or exploring new places locally in your area, or just simply by recon reconnecting with your siblings or uh, your neighbors, because the third house also represents siblings and neighbors and your local environment. And your aff affirmation for this season is, I embrace curiosity and expanding my mind and enriching my daily interactions. Awesome. And last but not least is Taurus, sun, moon, or rising. So you just had Jupiter leave your first house. And Jupiter in the first gave you the go card. You can do whatever you wanted. Now, whatever you did during that year, Jupiter is now in your second house of your value system and your resources. Now, just say you launched something that was like your heart's desire or you started a new career or you follow your passions, then Jupiter in the second house is going to make that grow. It's all about financial growth. Also, a deeper understanding of your values. This is great for digging deep into what you value, how you spend your money. A lot of us purchase things that we like, right? And what we like is what we value. We will never spend a lot of money on things that we don't think are worth it, right? Like that we always say that, oh, that's not worth it. Like we would never buy, right? Like I even say that to my kids. I, I don't think that's worth it <laughs> because 
if we don't value it, we're not just going to drop a thousand dollars on it because it's not worth our money. We know money is an energetic exchange. And this is a great time to look towards this house and see what it is that you're aligned to. What are your values? How is it that you're spending your money? How is it that you're saving your money? And how can you increase it? So find new ways to increase your income, um, increase your valuable skills, because all of us have skills that are valuable and they can boost your income. They can boost your confidence and they can be ways they can generate money. There is a lot of people that are talented. This is a natural Venus um, Venus house. So just say you're an artist. You can sell your art and that's going to bring you money. It's through a talent that you have, a valuable skill that you have. And because you're selling that skill, you're bringing money. Us as astrologers, we sell our readings and it's through our talent of the way that we interpret the chart that we can sell our readings and we make money. So look at what it is that you are talented in, because this is also the house of talents, and see if you're able to revenue money through it um, and have a Jupiter expanded and grow it for you. It could also just be passive income. Maybe you have extra money that's in you know, your savings account and you've been looking into having it in a different type of account that's growing at a higher percentage a year, or you're curious about putting it in a retirement plan or a stock, a stock or any other type of option, like this is a time to do that research because you're valuing your money and you want to get more value out of it, right? So look at your finances and just make your money grow. Your affirmation for this season is... I am open to new opportunities that enhance my financial growth and personal values and talent. And that was it for all the Zodiac signs. Now we're going to end the season with a quick Gemini ritual that you can do on your own. And this is using a candle. Now, Emma, can you talk really quick about your Gemini candle? Sure. So the Gemini candle is, it's actually an introduction to spring. So the the scent is very light, sweet, and breezy. It has a blend of soft florals, well, more like green florals, like bamboo, with uh, just a hint of coconut. So it adds that little sweetness that Gemini has, that I know all Geminis have. I really love this candle. Every time I smell it, it feels fresh to me. Yeah, exactly. It's very fresh. And, and it's for me, I feel like it's fresh and it stimulates my mind. So that's why we're going to do a ritual on I speak. And then you can kind of fill in the blank. But really is I speak my truth. A lot of the times, I mean, Geminis are great communicators. But there's a lot of the time, even if they're great computer creators, they might have their throat chakra blocked because sometimes you can be a great communicator and you can like talk, talk, talk a lot. And then people like look like, what the heck did they just say? Like they can't understand what the person just said. And that is not a great communicator. It wasn't communicated clearly. Right. So. You can fill in the blank as I speak my truth or I speak um, confidently or I speak with clarity, whatever you want to fill in the blank, but it should be something like I speak and then blank because that is what Gemini really encompasses. Um and then there's some people that have the throat chakra completely blocked and they're super shy and they get nervous and they can't talk at all. So we also need to balance that, right? And Gemini will be, um, this, this ritual is good to balance your Gemini house. And it's also going to help your Mercury placement, wherever you have Mercury at. You can use Ge um, Gemma. I was going to say Gemma. Gemini and Emma together. See, there's my Mercury getting tired already. 
Emma's candle, the Gemini candle, which smells amazing. Or you can just use a regular candle, whatever you wish. But I want you guys to try her candles out. They smell amazing and they're very inexpensive. Plus, she offers a code COSMIC, right? Yeah, Cosmic. And also what's really good about the Gemini candle right now is you don't need to use it just for Gemini season. We, we, can, we can use it throughout the whole Jupiter in Gemini uh, transit, which is a year, up until a year from now. So, you know, That's to kind of bring in that Jupiter and Gemini energy to whatever house Jupiter is transiting in your chart. Exactly. And with candles that are tailored for, for zodiac signs, remember, you can use them before season. But if you happen to be a Gemini sun, you can use it the entire year because you're a Gemini sun. So every time you turn on that candle, you're activating your sun. Or if just say you're a Gemini moon, you're activating your Gemini moon. I like to use all the candles based on season, but I turn on my Pisces candle and it's not Pisces season. And I actually like the Cancer candle and I don't even have plants in Cancer. But Cancer rules my 12th house, which is Pisces house. So it makes kind of, it probably makes sense why I turn it on. Um, so I secretly like the Cancer one more than the Pisces, but I'm not going <laughs> to admit that to my Cancer, I mean, my Pisces candle. <laughs> But either way, I mean, we use it because in the Astro Vibe tribe, we do a lot of like rituals with candles and we like to combine the candle with the, the season because Emma really crafts the energy of the season and makes it a candle. So that's why I love her candles, because she really encompasses the season. Like if you smell it, you're like, yeah, this really does like feel like Sagittarius or Gemini like it really does like it's even without reading the label like you really feel that energy like especially Scorpio when you smell Scorpio there's just uh, no, yeah <laughs> like it's Scorpio like you can't confuse that and even Leo like I think all of them like all of them like you can smell in Virgo too Virgo's earthy like they're all like really suited for their sign so when you're working with candles that way energetically um that's amazing but you can also work with them like because you're like I'm gonna activate my sun because remember your sun is your life purpose so you turn on your candle and you're like trying to manifest something through your sun energy and that could be any time so we should do a course about it we could talk about it later so yeah, oh my God. Put in the comments. Talk about how to use these candles. Um, let us know in the comments if you're interested. So we can talk about how to use all these candles. There's like multiple ways to use zodiac candles, but really Emma's put a lot of effort into creating these scents. Like they're really, really tied in to the essence of the season for sure. Like there's just no way you can mix in the scent like there's you're not gonna smell capricorn and be like oh that belongs to gemini it's just not gonna happen no uh -uh. Like, not gonna happen <laughs> yeah you're gonna be like yeah that is capricorn and this is gemini is because that's how vibrationally aligned those scents are to the season like she has it so on point either way the code is cosmos we do link it in the cosmic 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 <laughs> sorry we do link it below and we put it in the comments so you can, if I, you know, forget or whatever, if you forget, just go there. But again, I speak fill in the blank. So you just need candles. I like using wood matches. Yes, you can use a regular lighter, but not a big fan. You use wood matches. You want to always have a piece of paper and pen so you can write down your manifestation and your favorite crystal. My favorite crystal to use during Gemini season is something connected to the energy of Mercury. So um, if you feel like it's the energy is a little bit on grounding, you can use something like Am Amazonite or Hematite to ground you. But um, any yellow stone is nice, like citrine is nice. Um, especially because citrine is connected to Jupiter and we have Jupiter transiting the sign of Gemini. So you can work with citrine. You can work with, um, what's another yellow stone that I like? Bumblebee Jasper. I like that one really nice for Gemini. 
and barrel. I like barrel. That would be more of a gem. So like just say you have a ring, a barrel ring. You can put that ring on. And when you're writing, you're just like, because you have it on, remember, you're you could use your precious jewelry. You're you have the energy of that gemstone on your finger. And you can even put it on your pinky, which is connected to Mercury, and you're writing and you're bringing in that energy. So what other crystals do you like to use? What crystal do you put on the candle? Uh, so for that candle, I had put, uh, I think, yeah, it was the clear quartz because the ones that I wanted, I could not find. So I put the clear quartz uh, for the Gemini. But I personally like to use Amazonite for uh, Gemini just because of, um, for communication purposes. Yeah, Amazonite. That's me. Yeah. yeah, Amazonite's amazing for for Mercury and Gemini energy. Amazing. It it has like such subtle, amazing light energy. But clear quartz is also really, really good. Um, and it's a master stone. So clear quartz is also really, really good for Gemini energy for sure. And there's also um a lemon, a lemon quartz. It's like a yellowish port a stone this is for the crystal collectors so i don't know they, that one <laughs> yeah they can use that one it's a quartz that has like a yellowish yellowish tint um because gemini you know it's connected to the energy of yellow um so they can use that as well so those are some crystal suggestions but you can use any crystal whatever crystal is called i mean i love malachite that's my baby so if i want to use malachite i'm going to use malachite so, but I have a lot of crystals. I have a lot of crystal collection. Um, so I'll I'll have like, you know, there's times that I I use different ones and whatever pops up. But those are some suggestions for you. Now, the essential oil, if you have essential oil, you don't have to go run out and get it and buy it. But there's some of you that love essential oils. I'm one of them. If you have essential oils and you do not have a scented candle. If you don't have Emma's candle, you can put essential oil on your candle. If you have Emma's candle, you don't need to add lemon oil because Emma's candle already smells nice. She already uses natural essential oils to create her candle. There, It's already within the soy wax. So you don't need to add additional. This is only if you're using like a plain white candle that has no scent, then you can add a few drops of lemon oil onto the candle just so you can get an extra oomph of energy. And the lemon energy, the citrus energy is connected to the sun. And that's, we have the sun in Gemini right now. And it's also really good for Jupiter and Mercury. So we're, you know, bringing in that citrus energy, connecting it with it. So <clears throat> you want to go ahead and start writing on their I speak whatever my truth and you do that affirmation and then whatever else it is that you are speaking your truth in if you feel like an example you want to launch a business and part of your business means that you're gonna have to um, market on social media but you're terrified of recording a video or, you know, a marketing live or do things like that. So you might have to manifest that all that goes away, right? So you're going to say, I speak my truth. I stand in my power, something like that. And then you're going to imagine yourself. So you're going to write a little short story of you being able to record this and that how proud you are of yourself and how you did it and how successful it was and how you're achieving your goals, like things like that, like everything went well. You light up your candle. And once the candle is lit and it burns, then from there, you put your paper away, you put it away somewhere where it's like you can see it. During the Gemini full moon. So that's going to be in Sagittarius six months from now. So you can see if by then you already achieved it. 
We're still going to have a transit of Jupiter in Gemini, but you want to go in the halfway point. This is when Jupiter is opposing because you, you're checking in. Have I done it? This is when you hold yourself accountable. Have I done anything? If you haven't done it, then you at that point could keep working on it. If you have, then you congratulate yourself and then you can throw away that goal because you did it. Pat on the back. Um, but that's what you can do. You can store it away with your crystal if you're not going to use it. You're, if you're wearing jewelry, your jewelry can always be a reminder of the goal that you set in mind, that you are going to speak your truth. You're going to share your message to the world. You know, you're going to share your book. You're going to share, share your blog. You're going to share anything that's connected with speaking, whatever it is. You're going to share your YouTube channel. You're going to share, share, share. Anything you would like to add, Emma? No, I think that covers everything. Yeah. 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 So that is the ritual for Gemini. And again, you can utilize this candle for the entire season. Check out Gem uh, Gemma again. Gemma. <laughs> che that's going to be your new name. Gemma. Gemma. <laughs> I mean, I am a gem. Just saying. Yes, you are. <laughs> you are a gem. You're a shiny gem. Um, check check out Emma's website and you can check out all her other candles and all her other she has other candles too like the cabin one oh that's amazing the cozy cabin everyone's favorite yeah yeah other other stuff other projects she works on so it was a pleasure doing this and we will see everyone for um another episode yeah. when we talk about cancer yeah, let us know if you guys have any um input on what you want us to talk about for the next episodes. Um, any specific topic, anything you would like like us to look at the chart of, anything. We're open yeah. to most things. Yeah. I know that mm, maybe for cancer season we might do the election since America is a, a cancer, cancer nation. Star. Yeah, maybe it'll Oof. be perfect for that. Okay. Think about it. Still suggest, and then if we don't see anything better than that, then I think we would do that. Yeah, we can do the solar return of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. And That's then we can tie good. in the, the upcoming election with it too. Okay. Yes, yes. I think that sounds that sounds good. Because that's a coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know we're all like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, right? It is yep. what it is. We're still going to live through it. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll be fine. We survived with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Well, it was a pr pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. This was a blast. Yes, like always. And we will catch everyone later. Bye. Bye.